We are at uh, PCR TV studio. I'm uh, Patrick Sarreus, and uh, I have in front of me uh, Carlos Cole. I think that uh, Tuesday we had uh, important communication in the main arena. It was a provocative story. Can you tell us what happens on that day in the main arena on the topic of uh, coronary angiography non-invasive to make the diagnose in a stable angina? Well, uh, Tuesday was a fantastic day uh, with the presentation of the Syntax 3 revolution in the main arena. <clears throat> the main results of the Syntax 3 uh, was the similar recommendation in terms of treatment strategy between angiography and CT and as uh, you remember it was a, a very transformative moment in the, in the, during the presentation as it's a revolutionary concept as the name of the trial. So, But uh, I think that the audience realized that it was not a real trial, it was a virtual trial. Could you describe the virtuality of that trial, if I can say so? Yeah, for the first time, the heart team was randomized. So instead of randomizing a patient in Syntax 3, the doctor was randomized. So two heart teams composed by a surgeon, an interventional cardiologist, and a radiologist with a new component of the heart team were randomized to assess the epicardial coronary artery disease either with coronary CTA or with a conventional angiography. And the primary endpoint of the trial was the agreement in terms of anatomy, with anatomy alone, on the decision between surgery and PCI. Finally, the main result of the trial was a very, very high agreement, 92.8%. What was the statistic target of the trial? When do you say the, the, the trial is positive, is successful? So we powered the trial to show a substantial agreement based on the kappa coefficient of 0.6, and we observed a kappa coefficient of 0.82, which in the statistical jargon is an almost perfect agreement. So. To be statistically correct, we found an almost perfect agreement between the decision derived from coronary CTA and the decision derived from conventional angiography. So at that level, they were equal in terms of uh, anatomy. Uh, did, did they use something more than the anatomy to take the decision? Yes. So in the arm of coronary CTA, the heart team, after the first decision, received the FFRCT. The FFRCT was feasible in 92% of the patients, and it changed the treatment decision in 6% of the patients. But beyond the anatomy and the correction for the function, there were other parameters influencing the decision for PCI versus surgery versus what we call equipoise. It was only anatomy and physiology of what was the third component there. So that's a very good question. So on top of the anatomical syntax score, the functional syntax score, syntax 3 also used the syntax score 2 using the functional syntax score derived from FFRCT to compute what we call the syntax score 3, which is the combination of anatomy physiology and comorbidities. Those three elements were as, uh, assessed by the heart team to make the treatment recommendation in each of the arms of the trial. So you had in your possession a, a calculator and when you have introduced the anatomy, the anatomy correct for the function and then the clinical characteristic and the comorbidity, the calculator was giving you a recommendation for treatment? Is that what I have to understand? Yes, so when you put this uh, information in the calculator, you will receive a recommendation which is based on a four-year predicted mortality if the patient undergoes surgery or PCI. If the predicted mortality is not different between the two groups, between the two uh, strategies, the calculator will recommend either cabbage or PCI. If the risk is higher with PCI, then the calculator will recommend to go to surgery. And it was that the risk at short term or at risk at long term? So it's a four-year four four year predicted mortality, all-cause mortality. So what is the next step now? Well, This is a virtual trial. 
how are we going to move from there and what is the recommendation for the practitioner of ferro-PCR? So it's a, I think it's a very robust first step. The next step I think will be to test the hypothesis that surgery can be performed without conventional angiography. I think we are moving in that direction. That's the problem of the surgeon. Uh, they have to go to surgery with a black box. They have not seen the conventional cine angiography and they have to learn to uh, interpret the uh, multi-slice CT scan. For the interventional cardiologist, it's just a bonus. You agree with that? We have, we have an extra information the day before going to the cat lab. We can uh, fantasize about what we are going to do and make the planning. But for the surgeon, it is a necessary step to do a feasibility safety trial. Yes, I think uh, we have to move in that direction because this is a first in men, has not been done before. So I think the first step to reassure that this strategy is feasible in the real world is necessary to make this next step as a pilot for further steps in this. Uh, to, to finish this interview, I mean, uh, I remember that uh, in the auditorium there was a question and a question about gatekeeper. Uh, what was your impression? What did you hear after that uh, in the Congress about the future gatekeeper? Don't, don't burn your fingers. Uh, you are young, so you have to respect the, the structure uh, that are existing. But how do you see the next decade if it goes on like now? Well, so in the main arena, as you mentioned, the radiologists emerge as one of the possible gatekeepers for uh, uh, the assessment of the coronary anatomy. I believe that us as interventional cardiologists will have to be more and more involved with the evaluation of coronary CTA for the treatment decision and also for treatment planning. I think it can help in both, in both scenarios. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Kole, for this uh, provocative and stimulating uh, uh, interview. I hope that we will reconvene in 10 years to see if you are right. Thank, Thank you, you very much.